Thanks for joining. My name is Lisa Coliati, and I'm here to talk to you about how affiliate businesses can pay just 4% tax in Puerto Rico. Uh, so first things first, you must be willing to move to Puerto Rico. This is not something where you can just set up your business in Puerto Rico and continue working in the States. You do have to relocate and work from there. Uh, second, do you own your own business? Uh, the tax incentives are really designed for the business owners. So regular salaried employees don't really get the same benefits that the owners do. Um, that being said, if you're in the position where you can work for yourself, uh, consultant, writer, um, anyway, Puerto Rico has made it easier for them for you to set up your own business in Puerto Rico. So if those two apply, this session will hopefully be useful for you. Uh, if not, I won't be insulted if you choose to spend your time elsewhere. Um, so a little bit about Puerto Rico and how this works before I get into the tax incentives themselves. So the reason that Puerto Rico can offer 4% tax or any tax incentive has to do with their status as a territory and not a state. So what that means is that they are part of the U.S. Um, the residents of Puerto Rico are um, U.S. citizens fully. Um, it's domestic flights to Puerto Rico. They use the U.S. currency. They, um, you get other benefits such as the, the federal legal system, but you don't get all the other rights that come with being in a state. You don't get to vote in the federal election and you don't have representation in Congress. And that's where without the taxation or without representation, there's no taxation. So the IRS considers Puerto Rico foreign. Um, so it's kind of in a very unique situation. There's nowhere else in the world where you um, are still keeping your U.S. citizenship, but don't have to pay the IRS. If you're an American and you want to move abroad to Singapore or the Bahamas to get their tax incentives, you would pay the worldwide taxation. Um, that's not applicable here in Puerto Rico because it's kind of in that unique situation. Um, it's fully enabled by Congress to create their own tax code, and that's what's enabled them to create tax incentives to draw um, people and companies to the island. Um, so they've created several tax incentives over the years um, in all different industries, but there's two that I'm going to cover today that are particularly relevant, um, Act 20 for Export Services and Act 22 for Individual Investors. Uh, but before I get into that, I'll just give you a brief background, a little bit about myself, my company. Um, I am not a CPA, I'm not a tax lawyer, so I'm here as a marketer. Um, I moved to Puerto Rico with my husband in July 2015 for the tax incentives. So I learned firsthand what's involved with them um, and what's involved with moving. At the time, there wasn't a lot of information that was both accurate and in English. Um, so I, along with a few others who had recently moved to Puerto Rico, founded Puerto Rico Business Link. Uh, it started as a directory just of reliable service providers so that when you do need to find the CPA or the tax consultant, you can trust that they're, they're good and they're not giving you the gringo price. Um, and then from there, it has grown to more of a, a resource hub where you can learn about the tax incentives, um, read articles and video about uh, moving and living in Puerto Rico. Um, and then with that, we've become a uh, qualified promoter, which means that we've been approved by the government to um, promote these tax incentives. Um, we do the marketing better than they can. So um, with that, I'll get into the tax incentives. The first one is Act 20 for Export Services. And this is really the big one for affiliate marketers. Um, it was created in 2012 to attract businesses to the island who will sell their services off the island. So that's really an important aspect of it, and that's why affiliate businesses can do really well. Um, it ranges in all types. Um, there's a, many affiliates who have already moved, as well as networks such as Monster Ads, um, who the president was just here talking about how much he likes it, so, um, and he's been there three years. It, there's a whole range of businesses that can, can make the move. So the big thing about Act 20 is that you get 4% corporate tax rate. Um, and that, in comparison to the federal tax rate of 39.6, is a huge difference. Um, and I do have an example uh, in a couple of slides. You can see the numbers and see how much that, that changes. So you, know, you can judge how well your business will do if once you move to Puerto Rico. Um, sorry, I'm just going to look at my notes a little bit. 
Um, anyway, so with the 4%, that's taxed at the corporate level. And then as another benefit, uh, you, the owner, do not pay extra percent, anything extra on the dividends. They're 0%. Uh, so as long as you are a resident of Puerto Rico, you're not paying additionally on that. Um, whereas in the States, as you know, if, especially if you've got a uh, pass through LLC, you would be taxed personally um, on any of that income. Um, on top of that, a couple of other little things. There's a 60% exemption on the municipal tax. Uh, depending on which city you move to, I think it's like a 1% of your gross uh, revenue, so 60% exemption of that. Um, and then if you choose to open up an office, there's 0% property tax for the first five years. Um, so those are some key benefits. Um, that's, I mean, that is what the tax incentive is about, is just reduce your tax burden completely. Um, and as I mentioned, it's all to Puerto Rico and it's not to the IRS. Um, there are a couple of uh, requirements for this tax incentive. Um, and I highlighted this one, the operations must be performed in Puerto Rico because it's really a big thing. Um, that is where you need to be willing to move to Puerto Rico. Whether it's your entire team or just a, a subset of your team, it's really important that the operations that are driving the revenue be done from Puerto Rico. Um, and this is important both for the Puerto Rican tax authority as well as the IRS. Because if the IRS finds out that you're still actually running most of your work from the states, whether it's because you've got a team here or you, know, you take an extended vacation where you start working again from your home state, the IRS will, could audit you and could say that money is owed to the IRS. Um, so that's where it's really important just to make sure that you're working from Puerto Rico. Um, other than that, you need to open a bank account locally, uh, and you may be required to hire employees. This was a recent change in the law, just passed earlier this month. Uh, they used to require five employees. Now uh, they've removed that blanket um, requirement so that they could allow more of the small businesses, the individual consultants um, and partnerships to move to the island and make it easier for them to get set up without having to hire employees they wouldn't normally. Um, however, if you do have a larger staff already in the States, um, they may ask you to hire some in Puerto Rico as well. So then moving on to Act 22. This is for individual investors. Um, this incentive was created to attract the high net worth individuals and their money to the island. Um, it's mostly day traders, larger investors, mutual fund managers, but it does also benefit the company owners who may be looking for an exit. The only caveat to that is worth noting that, let's say you've, got a, you, you know, you've been running your company for five years in the States and you move to Puerto Rico and you sell it after a year. Those long-term capital gains, the first five years, the IRS is still gonna want their share of it. It's only that one year that you've been in Puerto Rico that would be at 0%. If you can plan really long term and over 10 years after moving from Puerto Rico, all of it would be attributable to Puerto Rico and you wouldn't pay tax on any of those capital gains. So if you can do a long term plan, for, if you have a long term plan for selling your company that far out, then this is definitely a tax incentive worth getting. However, if that's not in your plan and you're just looking to operate from Puerto Rico, then Act 20 is, is, is enough. Uh, you don't have to do both of them. Um, and the reason why I say you may not want both has to do with some of the requirements for 22. This one, it's on you personally. You need to be a resident of Puerto Rico and maintain that for the entire time that you have the tax incentive. Um, and that is defined by the IRS tax code. So you need to live in Puerto Rico for 183 days or more per year um, and then establish a closer connection to Puerto Rico. And that's your, you know, update your driver's license, your voter registration, make sure your primary residence is in Puerto Rico, uh, things like that, your kids enrolled in school in Puerto Rico. Um, all that goes towards establishing your bona fide residency. Uh, you also need to open up a bank account in Puerto Rico, um, pretty simple, buy property within two years. And then uh, most recently, you also need to donate $5,000 annually to a charity. Um, so, few more requirements. And again, the two tax incentives, um, they're often associated. So if you do any research on them, you'll probably come up where they're always together. 
Um, and that's because they were created at the same time, they were introduced together, but you don't need to get both of them. Um, and it really depends on your individual circumstance whether or not you want one or both. So quick example, let's say that you, your company has a net income of a million dollars. You yourself take a $100,000 salary um, and you are required to take a salary. It you know, should be comparable to others in your industry and in your title, uh, but it's up to you to set. I picked 100,000 because it's a nice round number. So if you have no other income, no passive um, stocks or anything like that, your US federal taxes would be almost $388,000. Um, that again is the, the federal rate of 39.6, that's where you would top out. It does not include the you know, state tax. So if you live in New York or California, you're paying even more than that, unfortunately. Um, and then Puerto Rico, it would only be just under 58,000. Um, and another example, if you did want to get both, um, Act 20 for your business and 22 for you personally, um, in this example, let's say you, you like investing in the stock market and you're pretty good at it, you make $50,000 short-term capital gains. Your U.S. federal taxes would go up, um, but your Puerto Rico one would not because that, the short-term capital gains are all at 0%. So you, you save a lot. <laughs> um, that's what it comes down to, and it's all perfectly legal. It's not um, a, a tax evasion in any way because of the way that Puerto Rico is set up as a territory and that the IRS has written in their code what Puerto Rico can do. Um, and I mean, that's it. There's, <laughs> uh, we have created a simple tax calculator on uh, my website, uh, pierrebusinesslink.com. So if you wanna plug in numbers for your business and see what it might come out to for you personally, uh, you can find that out. Um, keep playing around with different scenarios so that you would see what the benefit is over year after year as your income grows. Uh, and then if, you, if this is something for you, please let me know. I'm f uh, free to take questions. I'll be around afterwards as well. And then my phone and email. Uh, but so are you required to take a salary? You are required to take a salary. Um, it's, it's not um, specific what amount you have to take. Just you have to have a salary. And the rates for Puerto Rico are slightly less than the federal rates. So their max is at 33%. But it starts, it, um, it graduates up to that, um, but it kicks in at about $61,000. So that's where the, I'll go back. Um, so the 57,000, it's roughly 40,000 would be the 4% of your, um, your million dollars. And then the other 17,900 is what would be attributable to your salary. So there is tax there. Um, and that's where it also goes to your Medicaid and your your social security. And they don't mandate what that salary should be, right? No. You want it something reasonable not to raise any flags in an audit, um, but that's about it. So if you have a company with 10 employees, can you move half your operation to Puerto Rico? Yes. Um, that gets a little tricky. Um, so if you want to move some of your employees over, um, some of your operations, what you'll end up doing, um, and uh, you'll want to work with a, a good tax lawyer or CPA uh, to do this so that you can set up your business properly. Um, because if you own two businesses, so one in the States and one in Puerto Rico, you'll probably you should do a transfer pricing study. Those range from twenty to fifty thousand dollars, but it's similar to a business valuation where an economist will look at your industry and say to make sure that what you're paying your associated company is a fair market price. Um, so you need to make sure that you're structuring your two businesses in a way that most of the revenue is coming through Puerto Rico, but in a fair way paying your US company. Um, so if you have two partners though, which partner should move? Both. <laughs> They don't have to, but you'll maximize your benefits individually if you do. Because let's say one of the owners of the company stays, they'll pay the 4% corporate tax, and then the dividends from your Puerto Rican company, um, it's not quite the same, it's still a slight benefit to them, but um, 
they, I think it's a 20% foreign dividend tax. Um, so they would still be paying more than if they moved to Puerto Rico. So if you have a Puerto Rican partner, can you defer and then move down, let's say, in five years? No. <laughs> uh, theoretically, yes, and that's where actually CPA would um, be the best one to start answering how long you can defer for, um, because if you defer too long, being that um, the IRS will look at it as a controlled foreign corporation and they'll want to tax you on it. They'll see that as a tax avoidance strategy versus uh, becoming a resident of Puerto Rico. Not for an extended period of time. If you wanted to start your operations and maybe a year later go down and do dividends, that's possible. Uh, but going longer than that gets risky in an audit. <laughs> Any other questions? Yes. So can you talk a little bit about the lifestyle, how you like it, how easy it is to do business, internet reliability, stuff like that? Yeah. Um, I'll start with the easiest one. Internet reliability. There's actually some really good companies there that um, have, I have had very little problem with the internet in Puerto Rico. Um, there's actually some fiber ones if you're living in San Juan. Um, but outside of that, uh, it's pretty, still very reliable. You can get high speeds. Can't quite get gigabyte, gigabit in all of the, the more um, outside of San Juan areas, but it's, it's still very reliable. Um, Lifestyle-wise and business-wise, I mean, I personally think it's a lot of fun. There's a lot of beaches there, so if you like the warm weather and the beaches, um, it's a great place to live. Um, but business-wise, it is a little bit tricky. Um, there's a lot more, I don't even know if it's bureaucracy or paperwork, but it's, it's more complicated. There's more things, and especially if you don't speak Spanish, that come up unexpectedly. Um, you know, different, the municipal tax is one that just kind of comes out of nowhere. Um, suddenly have to pay, pay the municipality separate from the tax authority. Um, they have little things like, and they're trying to make improvements, um, but you know, having to get uh, your tax decree, your application, and then your annual filings notarized by a notary in Puerto Rico, you know, little things like that just kind of take more time than you would expect. Um, so that kind of adds to the challenge. Um, same thing with like banking there. Um, none of the U.S. banks actually operate in Puerto Rico, but they have their own U.S. their own banks. They're um, reliable. They're FDIC insured, and yet the process to go set up an account is more than what some people are used to. Um, they do ask a lot of questions because Puerto Rico has been flagged as a high-risk territory given the trafficking that could happen through the territory. Um, so they they get to know a little bit more about your business than you might expect when you open an account here in the States. Um, but other than that, um, you know, it, it's manageable. It's not hard to get done. Um, it can all stay as the, the way as it is in the States. Um, there's no reason not to have some of your revenue go through your bank account in Puerto Rico. Um, it helps show that it's your main place of residence, but there's no specific requirement other than having and maintaining a bank account. And the, the taxes that you pay on your salary and your employee salaries, what's the, the company portion of an employee salary tax? Um, Oh, yeah, they don't have, you still have to pay um, Social Security and that comes off the personal one. So, um, and Medicaid are done, but that's it. And then the rest is all the personal tax. So, so is there any, oh. how long are they Yeah, they're not going to get the benefit of this. So you can try to convince them just by it's a great place um, in terms of, it, you know, it's sunny, it's an adventure if they like that sort of living. Um, so as an employee, what's the tax difference? Is it pretty much equal or slight savings? Uh, as an employee, equal or slight cost increase. Um, as I mentioned, the, ta the personal tax rate 
max is out at 33%, so that's less than even the federal, and if you include estates, it's definitely a savings. But it, the, the steps are lower, so if they make anything over 61,000, as a couple even, it doesn't increase for couples. So as a couple at 61,000, they're gonna start paying the highest rate possible. Um, and then if they make quite a bit more than that, they may see that they're no longer getting any benefit of living there. Um, so I have to tell them that I have to pay you less to save you more in taxes. <laughs> <laughs> or you can pay them more since you'll have more savings available and that would offset their costs. <laughs> um, you know, there's a lot of people who do move their, their employees down um, or hire locally. It's definitely an option. Um, there's a lot of people available uh, in Puerto Rico to work. Um, if you set up transfer pricing properly, you could shelter your profits there. If you, yeah, if you do your proper transfer pricing, the economist will tell you what the structure should be, but that's, yeah, what you want to do so that you can maximize what's going through Puerto Rico. Any other questions? What's no. the municipal tax rate? Uh, it varies per city. Um, the one that's highest and just went up and is now in a court battle um, is Caguas, which isn't even the main city. I think it went up to like 1.5 percent. So are you in San Juan? San Juan, yeah, and that What's was 0. 0.9. What's the rate in Rincon? I don't know Rincon. Um, in terms of areas, not many people move to Rincon uh, for Act 20 and 22. Uh, there are definitely some. Uh, Rincon, just in terms of lifestyle and it, for everybody to get a sense of the, the island, San Juan's the major city. Uh, it's kind of in the middle north of the island. Um, so that's where most people go to. There's different cities within that area. Um, you know, if you want the more urban, if you want suburban. Um, and then Rincon is on the west coast, and it's a little bit of a, a slower uh, pace, but it's got great surfing. Um, a lot of expats do go there, um, but I unfortunately don't know the tax rate there. So are you in an expat enclave where you are in San Juan? I don't know if it's a full enclave. Um, I was in Condado, uh, which is a suburb or an area, not even a suburb, area of San Juan. That's where a lot of expats go, but it's, I wouldn't say it's a full enclave. It's not, uh, Dorado is more of an enclave where that you know, gated community um, really attracts the um, expats, English speakers, high net worth individuals. They've got some really great luxury uh, real estate there that's beautiful. Yes. And do they have the same as cities and counties? Can you get outside the city and then no municipal tax? They're all municipalities, no matter, like, there's a hundred of them. Um, so you can't fully avoid it. Um, but with the 60% exemption of the, you know, roughly 1%, um, it does reduce it quite a bit. Sorry, what? What are they taxing you on? Um, on your gross revenue. Gross revenue. Yeah. Yes. Uh, the gentleman over there asked about having a partner that's in the States, but let's say the other partner is in Puerto Rico. Mm -hmm. You talked about federal distribution, something around the 20% range. Yeah. What's, what is that? Um, so that's. Um, if you set up the corporation in Puerto Rico and it's paying dividends to people outside of Puerto Rico, the IRS will tax you like it's a dividend from any foreign company. Um, and that's where it, uh, it's 20%. And it's not, the, um, it's not like an S-corp where it's passed through to you at your personal income tax rate. It would be a foreign dividend rate. What Trump's in office so it may change? All of this may change. But for now, that's where it's at. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes. So, I mean, with all these things, is there, you know, a good place to find like Puerto Rican CPAs and tax lawyers that you can then talk to about like what your personal plan might be? Because I think a lot of this stuff does vary. There's a lot of ways to do it. It does, yes. Um, and that's where. So on my oops, website, Pure Business Link. Um, 
we've got a directory of service providers and I do highly recommend working with a credible um, tax lawyer or CPA. Um, sometimes you can get both within a firm um, and if you've got questions about which one would be more appropriate for you, I'm, I'm happy to help. Um, as I mentioned, I, I'm, my company is a qualified promoter, so what that means is that we'll help you move uh, without charging you anything. Um, so we'll be there to answer all the questions, and then afterwards we get paid by the government for attracting co uh, companies. Uh, but then in the meantime, we get to give you unbiased opinions on whether or not you're finding a, a good CPA or tax lawyer. You know, if you've got a complicated structure or not, uh, you know, we can generally guide you in that right, the right direction to find the ones that are best for you. But it is really important. Some people try to do it on their own. It is possible. Um, but somebody I know, um, he, he said it best, you know, it's, it is possible to do it, but it's really painstaking. And that should be your only goal is to prove that you can do it because it's much more um, economical and you know it's not worth your time to do all of that paperwork on your own you know hire somebody who's qualified and who can answer all the questions for you and make sure that your business is done properly is this only for US uh, citizens no uh, foreigners can move to Puerto Rico as well you will face the, the standard US immigration requirements um, but you know but if you you've do it as a foreigner too, you don't have to as a foreigner, though, when you export, when you transfer to another country, though, you may get hit with the uh, exit tax, though. No. Right? Not from U.S., but from other countries. Probably. No other country has the exit tax, other than Eritrea. It's U.S.? U.S. and Eritrea. Eritrea? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so other, com other countries, I know I'm Canadian, so I don't pay a, okay. um, a worldwide taxation or exit tax to Canada, um, but... It's, yeah, it's open to all, all, all countries, but you do have to have the proper U.S. immigration and visa uh, to get set up. Like a business visa or something like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What about the living expenses, like food prices, meal, eggs, and all that? Um, it's not cheap, um, and this is where it's actually, it seems odd. You know, I'm sure you've heard in the news that Puerto Rico is in... Um, has a lot of financial difficulty and you know there's a lot of poverty that does not mean that the price of living has gone down and it's super cheap to to buy up property or uh, your normal living expenses um, unfortunately they're quite high because they still do have to import most of their food I think they import about 80% of their food um, all of their electricity is imported from oil so their electricity is actually quite high um, but I don't have a firm rate because it kind of depends where you're moving from. Um, for me, moving from Texas, uh, electricity bill for a slightly larger place, you know, tripled. Um, so kind of depends where you're moving from, though. The property value, it depends on what you're looking for. Um, so as I mentioned, like Dorado, which is a, a nice bubble of luxury homes, they're not cheap. That, that has not dropped at all. Um, these are million dollar homes, several million dollar homes. Um, but if you're looking for something more affordable, then you can find something kind of, you know, in one of the other neighborhoods. Um, there's definitely affordable living. It's not uh, completely out of the way, but, you know, you can also go all the way up into the millions for the homes. Sorry, all the way at the back. How about is it corruption? Like, you have to pay people off and stuff? <laughs> no. <laughs> Sorry, we're out of time. But the, to answer that question, no. There has been problems with corruption. Um, there's even last year there was a case in court about the electricity company corruption. Um, I'll say just quickly in general about the the politics and the debt because um, I mentioned that it um, largely does not affect the expats moving to Puerto Rico. Um, it those who are hit the hardest by it are the ones who are reliant on government jobs or government contracts. So if you're moving in with your business already set up and your own revenue stream, you're not dependent on Puerto Ricans buying your services, then you don't need to worry about that corruption or um, the, the debt that's happening. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's time. But uh, if you have questions, I'll be around. You can answer them individually.
Thank you.